So Tuesday the 25th of April. The sun is shining. And the cattle are just up. I'm going to go into this field next door. Today, this is the field I'm going to give a good hammering to. It's a rushy field. I left it rest last year. I call it the experimental field. And I'm going to use it as the field that I return to every time it's fully recovered. I'm going to try and give it as much of a grazing this year and keep it in its vegetative state for as long as I possibly can all year. Top it after each grazing as well. So that's what's happening today. So today is officially the start of our, uh, what would you call it? Our grazing of the growing season. So I left them in here yesterday. I was one move yesterday. So they had both sides of this hedge and a wider spot down here at the bottom. They'll be anxious to move now. I did a bit of topping beyond the cattle there yesterday. I might clean off the rest of this now today. I had the topper out. And I'm going to just look at my little Galloway here now and see what's the situation with her. We're waiting on this lady to calf. I don't think she will carry for much longer. Well, it won't be today, anyhow. No, definitely not. Probably another week, to be honest. So I will go and fence on this lovely calm morning and I will be back. They're not roaring at me anyhow, so that means they're not that overly anxious, but you can see the dung they're putting down here now on the ground. Now that the soil has come back to life with a bit of heat in the ground, it'll be interesting to see what that looks like now when I come back. It should be gone. So I'll, uh, I'll set up my paddock and I'll be back. So as I was saying, um, I did a little bit of topping here yesterday. Now this is after I've moved the calves, I just, or the cattle, I've, I said I'd throw this in because I've decided I'm going to go and top the rest of this field here. So uh, that's what it looks like afterwards and that is before. Now this topper here is uh, a Logic Flail, uh, 13 horsepower with a Honda engine. Now it's an old one, I got this... Uh, couple of years back and we did it up and we've put on a few modifications now as well because I don't want to be scudding the ground down too tight with them flails um, I like to just literally top as I say um, when I'm grazing I don't graze it down tight although I have kind of done it this year but it's early in the year and um, but I don't want to be ripping the grass down uh, to the clay altogether so I'll just basically take the tops of them rushes off. And also the land would be that bit unlevel as well. You could hit a stone or you could hit a bit of a stick or anything at all. So I have it set at six inches. Um, I think Greg Judy himself has his set at six inches. So I kind of held in my head that six inches would do. It's still low enough when you see it there. So if you go down too low, I found with this, and you hit the butt of the rushes, it's super thick and uh, the belts tend to slip and you could end up eating up all your belts and you don't want to be doing that. So the higher up, the easier. Um, and I don't need to be going down so low. So that's basically why it's set at that height. So let me just start it now. now I've used this yesterday and it had not been used for since the end of last year. So it started on the button. So literally, there's our button. Um, our fuel is on. It's very handy on petrol as well, I find. That was a full tank yesterday, and it's around here now. After doing that bit there, so I use about a third of it. So a few euros. 
And what else have I to do? It's on turtle. So pull the cord basically. No good. Put on the choke. There we go. Wait a minute.
So that's what's done now. So I went out to the side after all. Um, it's great for when you're in tight again, them hedges. You can take them briars out of it. So I'm very happy with that there. Now, that was a bit of a forge bush that was grown in the middle of the field that wasn't wanted. So I can literally take out big lumps of bushes. It tends to mulch that up far better than uh, rushes on the forest pass. Now there's big trees in there, I didn't go into that. I must get the chainsaw to them first. But uh, it's not manicured and lovely like a lawn. Obviously, I don't really need it to be like that. So it's battered up. Any rushes that are there left behind uh, have been hit anyhow that the moisture is going to go into them now and they'll rot out. So by the time I come back to this place now, it will have greened up nicely. So what are we now? The 25th of April. And that's cleaned off with the cattle, dunged and urinated on and topped. So I'm looking forward to coming back here. So the cattle are across the wire here and they're grazing away. I will come back this evening and judge if they have edited off enough and am I satisfied with what's left behind and I'll either leave them on it or make another little paddock in here. So I'll stick this in the middle of the video. So I have it fenced and I have them left in. Now I have a bit this side of that hedge and the same a little bit maybe larger on the lower side. Just this side of that quad. Oh, look at this cat. <laughs> Jesus. That's what happens. This is our buckle now that's uh, getting lively again. And look what he's after doing. Gee, Mike. Wait till I fix this back you now. Yeah, that's what happens when they don't see them. Anyhow, no harm done. What was I on about? Yeah, so this field was last year, um, I called it an experimental paddock. What I did was I let it grow completely over mature. It was a very rushy field and it still is now. It was an extremely rushy field. So the plan I had last year was to let it completely grow wild. I skipped it maybe twice and I, um, I then came in and when it was fully gone to seed, rushes as well as uh, grasses, completely overgrown, it was an awful lot easier to knock. So I tightened the cattle in on it and I knocked all the grasses and all the rushes down and flattened them out. And then I left it again for another couple of months and it came back slowly, to be honest. Uh, there was an awful lot of carbon knocked on the ground and it took a long time for that to break down. It sucks the nitrogen out of the ground, so it was poorish. And I think I made a video on it last year that there is that bit of a lag in how uh, the land can bounce back after putting down a tremendous amount of carbon. So basically, that was last year. This year now, I'm going to change it around. I'm going to, so it had very little use last year. So this year I'm going to change it around. I'm going to give it the most use of all the fields. Um, since it had such a long rest last year, I'm going to hammer it at every uh, opportunity I get. So basically I'm going to graze it off here now um, tight. I'm going to top it with the topper. I'm going to move the cattle away from it and continue to move the cattle. And as I'm moving the cattle, I will keep my, I'll keep my eye on this field continuously. And as soon as it's back to our eye feed, it can be grazed again in its uh, vegetative state, I will bring the cattle right back. So to be honest with you now, you might look at this field now and say it's rough and it's poorish. Yes, you'd be right. But it's actually, I would say, 50% better than it was uh, last year. Definitely. Now there's young rushes coming back here again. Now if I was to leave it alone again, all them little shoots there now would all grow up into big strong rushes again but there's a lot of sweet grass in between it so i'm gonna graze it off tight top it and keep her 
keep her under pressure for this year. So what I like to do is I like to change up things every time. I don't want to create any patterns or habits um, or system that each field gets the same impact every year. You want to be changing it up. So that's, um, that's the plan for this field this year. Yeah, so um, an absolutely beautiful day. And the cattle are glad to be down here. So we'll keep them moving anyhow. We'll keep them grazing. Um, we've got two cows left to calf, a Galloway and a Red White Hills Daughter, as I call her. I don't have a name for her, only that's what I call her. And then as soon as they're calfed and ready to go, I'll go down and I'll test the herd. So I think um, the 11th of May is when I tested them last year. So I have that bit of grace left before I test again. And that's it. So this is uh, what it looks like now. And I'll show it what it looks like when I'm done or gone. So that is it. I can't think of any more to say about this field. Um, yeah, but uh, we, we, we'll keep on moving. So for now, I'll say good luck and goodbye.